lot of women maybe want to join the military, but the idea is often that they don't want to necessarily be soldiers. So there's a common misconception, too, that we're all war fighters. And there is this clash where people who have done things like your husband has done or like my I mean the dishes <laughs> no, just kidding. he definitely didn't do that <laughs> or my husband he's he's a marine and you hear the stories you see the war movies and you think oh warriors and then there's this back and forth within uniform service members that anyone who isn't out in front fighting the fight is a pogue or um, which stands for I don't even know people I think it's um it, it's it's the, it's the people, people who know. aren't Right. Something Doing about war fighting support. stuff. Something about yes. support. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and we have FOBITs, which the FOB is the forward operating base. And those are the people that go to war and then never leave the protective barriers. And there's a lot of people who do that. And there's this misconception that somehow they're not as critical to the military as the people out there who are the tip of the spear, who are out there fighting, who are out there doing the individual one-on-one um, -on -one contact or unit-on-unit -unit contact. But something that was learned early in World War I is if you want to defeat another military, you cut off their supply lines. You hit them in the rear with the gear. If people can't get food, if they can't get fuel, they can't win wars. So when you have someone who might be a smaller person, male or female, and they're like, well, I can't hump a 90, I can't carry or hump a 90 pound pack. Um, sorry, a little bit mil military vernacular, but I can't carry that 90 pound pack with me through the woods. Well, you don't have to, to be value add to our military services. And even now, or especially now with drones, some of the kids who grew up playing Xbox, not that I advocate gaming right, right. at all. I really don't. It's um, If that's something you love to do, good for you. No, but, turn it off. You yes, know. go outside, get grass in your feet. Yeah, like, come break. on. But those people are huge added value for the Air Force. And some of these, the as the war becomes more digital, we need those skill sets. And you think of those people and you think of pale skin and not a lot of muscle and but they can add value as well as soldiers. When you decided to become a soldier, did you want to go fight a war? I did. I didn't want us to be at war, but I did want to be part of the tip of the spear, whatever that looked like. When you went to West Point, was that how, – how was that? So West Point, for people who don't know, if you could uh, highlight – I know what the Naval Academy is, and West Point is the – opposite of, right? It's kind of like the sister school, right? Am I butchering this? Yes. Every yes day to of butchering the year. this. Yes. <laughs> no, no. Every, Every day, day of the year, year, we absolutely love our brothers and sisters <laughs> in the Navy, <laughs> except for Army Navy. It's the first weekend in December. I promise you, like, I will we're not, not talking to yeah, you. We're, we're not, not talking. talking. Yeah. Okay. It, we're just not. Well, unless you want shaving cream in yeah, your car. No, definitely. It's, it's unless just you're going to clean it now. Yes. 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 Um, but, but Actually, the person who graduates last in our class in ranking, we call the GOAT, which is the mascot of the Naval Academy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's, that's how much love, love there is there. there. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. So, so West Point is the Army's um, school, college, commissioning source. Uh, we often say that the history you read was written by our graduates uh, because a lot of our graduates, you've got your your patents and your uh, – your Schwarzkopf's and you know, there's a, there's a long line of history from uh, West Point graduates. But it is a military school. So you leave from your high school less than 30 days after graduating high school, you spend your whole first summer doing basic training, then you go into the school year, the whole time you're there, you're under military regulations, you wear a uniform the entire time, your summers are taken up with military training. When um, most college kids are coming home for Christmas break, you're at military intercession, learning small unit tactics. So I went there um, really wanting to be as military as I could. And I started off thinking, OK, well, based on being a woman and wanting to be um, use my mind, be an intellectual, I want to go military intelligence. I actually really thought that that was the, the field for me. But as I learned more about the Army, um, I did get graduate with a degree in civil engineering, and I realized that I could go somewhere where there was nothing and build something that lasts forever, and I could do it with the military. So that means I can do um, service projects, which the military does a lot of that. We go into um, 
communities that need rebuilding and we help build them up, whether it's improving water systems, improving structures, or I could go and be a combat engineer, which is another part of that. And those are the people who do the demolitions and they do they they blow stuff up and they clear lanes or they clear minefields so that the infantry can move forward. Um, there's even a joke among combat arms that uh, the infantry guys always say that infantry leads the way and then engineers reply only after we clear it for you. <laughs> 